माय मोगाचो योकार सगले आमचे सी सी आर टी वी पोलिनरांक चौदा फेब्रुवारी ही जान आसा महत्व दीस आनी ए दिशा पोले लास्ट टाइम पांच वर्सानी याद करता हूँ ऑफ द वोटर्स जे जान आसा किंग्स ऑफ वन डे विदाउट दैम द इलेक्शन्स कैन नॉट टेक प्लेस दीस टाइम द इलेक्शन्स इन गोवा आर गोइंग टू बी वेरी वेरी टफ एवरीबॉडी एडमिट्स टू दीस फैक्ट वॉट वील बी द आउटकम वील बी नोन ओनली ऑन टेन्थ ऑफ मार्च आफ्टर nearly one month of the elections it is important that uh, everyone who is eligible for voting should take part uh, in these elections it's uh, your fundamental right to participate in the elections what is now important as you go to vote to select the right candidate and uh, discharge your voting with a greater responsibility this is very important especially when we have seen what has happened in the last so many years people have voted and they have got the government that they deserved lot of players are already piling up all ready to fight the battle and uh, <clears throat> there are lot of uh, newcomers new players in this field we have uh, somebody who has fought but he fought a different type of uh, uh, scenario and he was uh, with the indian navy distinguished uh, services with the indian navy having been decorated uh, after the kargil war decorated with a vijay star medal a career spanning for 26 years in the navy our own gone led from asanara but now he is based in shikalim in wasco the day he finished his uh, engineering degree at the goa engineering college in farmagudi the very next day he joined the navy at ins mandovi at uh, vere being a uh, mechanical engineer he was not quite happy he said i need to progress and uh, thought of going into marine engineering as uh, his specialization he served in the destroyer ins ranjit but uh, still he was not uh, happy he said i can do much more switched his career from the navy into naval aviation and uh, he did his aeronautics engineering as his super specialization and retired as a brave captain in the indian navy after being with the services for 26 years of a highly dedicated decorated service and what actually made him to have a different view of the world and especially go is the tsunami that uh, affected lot of coastal parts of uh, india including goa and that happened on 26th of december 2004 this was uh, the turning point uh, for him <coughs> can i now do something a similar uh, journey that i have taken in the navy can i do the, this for the people of uh, goa or india perhaps maybe and he said why can't i fight for uh, goa and the goans and he is uh, always well disposed because he is basically a sportsman having uh, been a national badminton player and uh, he says i know what is uh, uh, to win also i know how to lose and yet uh, be not a quitter because he says the winners never quit and a quitter never wins coming to goa he said we i need to do something for goa and in 2018 he was uh, one of those personalities who conceptualized the formation of goincho avas people uh, were quite uh, amazed at uh, this group called goincho avas and they made lot of avas 
uh, went to several places and their meetings were very, very well attended, both by men, women, boys and girls, and especially the youth, who he says they were the ones who said, we need to bring about uh, the change. He has uh, now immersed wholly in politics. He will be contesting the next elections. I have been talking about 14th of uh, uh, February 2022. He is uh, ready. He is all set. He has launched his campaign. And uh, let us uh, find out what uh, he has uh, up his sleeve and his mind. And uh, we are very glad to welcome Captain uh, Viriato Fernandez. Captain, my maga so yo kartuka. It's nice to have you with us here. You have spared your precious time because every second, every minute <laughs> you are needed for your canvassing, yet you have uh, come at our invitation. My pleasure. You have been with Goinso Awas and uh, of late uh, you have made uh, waves by uh, switching over to the Congress party and uh, your name has been cleared for contesting uh, in uh, Dabolim, if I am not mistaken. Yes. How do you feel the change from going to Awaz to Congress? No, going to Awaz is an idea, is a philosophy which will remain forever. We are all members of going to Awaz. There is no formal membership. But whoever fights for Goa, in every nook and corner of Goa, every village, the last man in the village is a member of going to Awaz. So no, going to Awaz is non-political organization. I have gone to a political party called Congress to take the battle to a different level for Goa. Okay, you, you, you are known for many various battles that you have fought and you always have been the winner. So do you think also this uh, trend will continue with you now in the Congress? Uh, you know, when you said uh, I am uh, fighting the battle in Dabolim, I have not come to fight elections. I have come to defeat a man who represents corruption, immorality, and all evil that is happening in Dabolim, the destruction. So I have come to defeat him, not to fight. To defeat him. And the people are going to defeat him. Uh, do you think so? Yes. Because we know whom you are fighting against, a very, very powerful force indeed. Do you think you will succeed? For me, you know, the only one who is powerful is God Almighty. And the people, this battle is of the people versus Movin Gudino. So, having been in the Navy, knowing how to strategize in battles, our strategy is working very fine. We are getting traction. But... My opponent doesn't know how to tackle us. We know where to play our games. It has not been a normal political fight. But uh, uh, do you think that uh, uh, being with the Navy and the services, the fight there, and the fight on the civilian front, and especially that now in Goa, you know, uh, uh, there are two different ball games altogether. The strategy remains the same. You know, I consider that there is an enemy out there. I know the strength and weaknesses of the enemy. So with that, with the strategy, we have already put our opponent in the corner. And that is why a man who never used to come on the streets to visit the people's houses is today struggling to walk even 100 meters because he knows that he has to come. That is the first victory what we have achieved in our strategy that we brought this man from the highest pedestal to the ground level. But have you been doing your work at the ground level? 24 into 7. Yes. And how? Well, what is the uh, repercussion of a captain coming to the people now? Instead of the repercussions, I think so, the response what I am getting. So they are saying wherever we go, Captain for double him. So that thing has caught on. I don't know who coined it, but everywhere it is captain for double him. So 
we are also going with the trend the youth also are saying captain for so when we knock on every house some people who have no captain for double so i feel encouraged so will your movement that you are now taking it up it should translate into votes for you hopefully yes we are sensing something very very historic yeah but then of late what we have seen many a voter can be purchased Absolutely. also and uh, we do not know what uh, what may happen this time that was what we had taken into consideration because we did the analysis of not only the two this is only the third time dabolim as a constituency is going to vote we studied the trend right from 1989 when he used to just come on a scooter where people contributed the money and they fought the battle for him today those people are there as elderly people do you think they will change absolutely absolutely oh, what what gives you so much confidence you know this is a festival of democracy election is a festival of democracy and when you see a man using police force and using his gundas to threaten our supporters that shows that he's frightened that is what gives us more confidence that we are on the right path but generally if you see how people have been reacting and even some of those who are contesting the elections they have been saying that the kind of politics that what we see now what is happening in goa cannot be tolerated and we have never seen such a, uh, a type of politics to this low level absolutely because goa and the people of goa we are a different kind we are peace loving you know something called which can't be defined uh, you know goinkar pond that goinkar pond is still there like you see this tmc has come from bengal and aam aadmi from delhi and it reminds again and again what nehru had said after the liberation goa ke log ajeeb hai so goans don't tolerate all this type of you know strong arm tactics and money power yes people have fallen prey to the money power and that is where we had taken all these factors into consideration and strategized and started a campaign almost 4 months back knowing that these are the weapons gundagiri uh, threats police force money power were the weapons that my opponent can use and we were ready for that but uh, are you confident that uh, the people will be with you all absolutely and there will be a huge silent vote this time is it i i was just told today there was a online poll conducted which was supposed to be for 24 hours but i believe it is still going on where i don't know which channel uh, where i believe the difference the margin which i am leading movin gudino is 34% okay so i think so that shows mm -hmm. the trend or the feelings that cannot be may not be exactly conversion into votes it's a online poll okay but people are showing their anger but this should uh, remain and last till the d day absolutely and anything can happen in between absolutely absolutely yeah do do, do you think that people are really serious uh, for bringing out uh, a change in the governance in goa you know as per my calculation and which i had conveyed to the congress leadership which even they were a little bit surprised i said anywhere between 26 to 28 seats is what congress can win if you strategize it which i gave them a little bit but you know they have bigger strategies i'm a small person a new member but i have been on ground in villages except walpoi porie bicholi mai these are the four place constituencies which at least i have not ventured into in the last four and a half years but other right from kankon to perne to everywhere we have been there on ground whether it was regional plan agitation odp coastal zone management plan or the three linear projects we know the sentiments on ground so basically you were tackling the environment the ecology of goa yes and uh, do you think people uh, are aware of that of the destruction that has been caused absolutely because i know that uh, we were operating without any budget knowing that 
knowing that the people when we used to go to the villages with the youth to give the presentation, they used to come with samosas or sandwiches that showed that the we have love. to love and we have to listen to this. They have, they, these are our people. But uh, uh, will the Congress also uh, work towards uh, maintaining the ecology and the environment of Goa? Because some of the things uh, have been brought by the Congress earlier, like the Mapa Airport, like the casinos, it was uh, their thought process. So will you be able to bring about a strong change in the thought process of the party that you have joined? I'm very confident because uh, our talks went on for quite some time. We had our demands. I put up quite a lot of demands, discussed with the leadership. And they didn't have any doubt about what we wanted. I said, it's not for me, it's for the generations to come. A fight is not personal. What legacy do we keep for our future generation? If our forefathers had kept Goa what it is today, what is our contribution? What will we be remembered for? And they were very amenable. I think so. This was uh, even I was very honored that some of the demands were discussed at the highest level uh, of the Congress hierarchy. And I am sure that is going to prevail. Uh, will you be working for it or uh, if the high command tells you, no, you stop at that, then what happens? I have my own principles that I have to live by. You know, I have certain convictions for my state, for my people. I think so that will be more important for me. And what is your vision for uh, Goa, Goans and especially the youth of Goa? We have to hand over a very safe, secure, sustainable Goa for the future generations. Not something that today we have something, finish it off, enjoy. No. We are enjoying today what our forefathers had left for us. And it's our responsibility to leave something good for our future generation. A lot of destruction has happened in the last few years, we have noticed, the last two decades. And the last 10 years has been disastrous. The two terms of the BJP. What in 2012 people said a change, that change turned out to be the worst ever in the history of Goa. But then these are the same 10 Congress people who joined them, stabbed uh, your party, joined them and then they did it much more. And uh, unfortunately, the party that you joined now was almost uh, silent until maybe you have joined them now. Uh, you see, one of the demand what I had put up before joining, the things going on, discussions, was this 10 betrayers should not be taken. And we had also, before getting, before taking the decision of getting into politics, if you recollect last January 16, we had an opinion poll day celebration at Loya Maidan. In that, we had warned other political parties. Whoever gives tickets to these 10 betrayers, plus the two fellows, Babu Ajgonkar and Pauskar, 12, you will have to face the wrath of the people. That means you are a party which encourages betrayers. Or you are honoring a betrayer of the people by giving him a ticket. And uh, are you sure that there won't be betrayers after these elections? There are black sheep everywhere. If I am part of a particular party, if there is a betrayal there, believe me, I come from the armed forces, I will do something which will remain as an example for the betrayers. So you will be acting like a major deterrent, if I can use that word. Much more than that. Okay. So you have a missile prepared for Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Okay. And also the election commission has been talking about uh, cases where people have got criminal records. And by 2017, the figure went up from 5% to 22.5%. This is the analysis uh, of uh, Association for Democratic Rights. Now, Goa is a very educated state. We have had always peaceful polls, unlike in UP and uh, Bihar. Now, uh, do you think so? 
this uh, uh, thought process of the election commission will be observed in Goa as far as uh, these uh, 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 cases where people have been uh, uh, charge sheeted and uh, they are awaiting the decision of the court. You know, when uh, ADR uh, rolls out its figures, they also tell about cases which are pending conviction. In that sense, yesterday, a newspaper in Goa on the front page uh, gave names of nine MLAs who have got criminal cases against them. All are not charged at it. Yes. In that, I was quite surprised that they omitted this newspaper particularly, omitted the name of my opponent, where eight days back, even the Bombay High Court said, do the trial of this person within the next one year, finish it off on fast track. Yeah, but then these parties claim that most of the cases are false and politically motivated. And that some cases have been filed by their rivals to make it difficult for the candidate to contest the elections. In some cases it could be. But in the case of my opponent, he even went to the Supreme Court saying, quash the uh, charges that have been filed. And the Supreme Court found the charges are valid. And he said, go back to the Bombay High Court and face the charges. So in all this, I think uh, the electorate has got a big charge now. Absolutely. I am reminded of a Portuguese writer called José Saramago. He says, as citizens, we all have an obligation to intervene and become involved. It is the citizens who change things. We cannot teach anybody anything. We can only make them think. Are you with this thought process that you need to make the voters think because sometimes the voters are, are not even knowing whom they are going to vote and mass somebody says all of us are going we also go with them so don't you think that the voters need to be highly educated this is one of the points which was part of my strategy in double M, where uh, my opponent uses money power to buy voters in the last 48 hours so we knew this, we had studied this man and this is where we started reaching out to the people that have you all got employment which was promised? They said no. Have you got water 24 hours? They said we get at 2-3 o'clock for about half an hour. The severe shortage of water in double M, parts of double M. All those things which affect them, we said. He said so who do you blame? They said the MLA. And I said, why are you blaming him? Is he not the person who had purchased the votes? We said, we have to stop this man from purchasing our votes. Purchasing our conscience. Because that man feels he has no obligation to do work in the constituency because he feels he has bought the vote. Let us stop this business of vote buying. And let us bring this change. We have to change our thinking. We have to change our conscience. Well, so how, how, how would you educate and bring about this transformation? Because if yesterday, votes could be bought with a sari or whatever it is. Today, uh, people are giving scooters, uh, ACs and things like that. And who will not fall for this type of uh, things? You know, I have gone out to the people with a small narrative. I said last election... They gave you 500 rupees per vote. Am I right? They say yes. I said that is for 5 years. I said in 1 year there are 365 days. In 5 years multiply by 5. It is 1825 days. So if you divide 500 by 1825 days. It comes to 27 paise a day. I said even a laborer who works. Gets 800 to 900 rupees a day. Have we fallen to such levels. That 27 paise. MLA humko bevkov bana rahe? I said, don't fall prey. I said, they know that you are fools. To this time they may give you 1000 or they may give you 2000. So 27 paise into 4, it will be 1 rupee 8 paise. Nothing yeah. works. I said, we have to fight for our right. Yeah, but then this uh, type of thought process, you can't change 
with those type of electorate, you know, who are at the lowest uh, level. This but we have in Goa, we have in Goa, very highly literate people, but uneducated in the, this type of uh, things. We have seen that, like in Dabolim, there are educated, less educated, and there are a large chunk of people who had come for labor work in Goa, which these politicians have cultivated as a vote bank. This is the vote bank that, uh, that everybody is now Absolutely. relying on. Absolutely. Because what happens is, the educated, the middle class people, they have come settled here, or they are inhabitants of Goa, and they want Goa or their surroundings, their village or their town to be good. But the ones who had come for work, they... Their mindset is still Mera Gao, UP mein hai, ya Karnataka mein hai. So their conscience or their thing is less towards Goa. You know? So we tell them that the politician is exploiting you. He is not looking for your benefit. He is looking for his own benefit. But they, 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 they all give them short term gains. That's all. And they are happy with that. So we have told what short term gain you had had in the last 48 hours of the election you are suffering for last 5 years. And we tell them when a politician gives, it is an investment. He is investing in you to earn crores of rupees as bribes. By sitting there as a minister, he is taking money from the contractors, from all the tenders, everything. He said you are left in the lurch, no roads, no education, no um, employment. During the COVID time, where was your MLA? He had no obligation to look after you because he feels I have bought your vote. So therefore, uh, the slogan that we are talking and discussing is uh, politics a noble profession. What do you think about it? You know, this is why we have a force to come into politics. Because politics was not my cup of tea. You know, I quit the Navy. I took a premature retirement. I had still about 10 to 12 years more. But I decided to start a second career, go abroad in aviation. A very lucrative job. What during that tsunami, what happened, I felt, yeah, I'll earn, I'll come, I have to do something for senior citizens. There was this plan which I had. But then on the verge of going, what happened, the regional plan, the destruction of Goa, whatever, changed everything. And that is why now, in the last four, four and a half years, various issues that we have been fighting along with the youth, we realize that the government in power is not listening to the voice of the people, the going to Awaz. You know, in democracy, you'll agree, there's a ruling and there's an opposition. Opposition is the voice of the people. Here, opposition was systematically destroyed, purchased, bought, whatever, reduced to five men, four of them former chief ministers, you know. So, finally the youth told us, for how long do you expect us to hit the streets? Let's get into politics, which we tried to explain to them, it's not a simple job. You know, you require money. We don't have, because what we had heard is, elections are about money. They said, no, we'll change. We'll change politics. Yes, I, we said, let's change politics. That is why when we first announced, we had announced only for three. We were not thinking of 40 and forming government. People always ask, why didn't you all this? The thought process is not to capture power. It is to have a voice on the floor of the assembly. To voice the people's concern. One voice is enough to stop corruption. One voice, one person, a single individual on the floor of the assembly can shake the entire government. That is the confidence we have. But you, you had in the last assembly, or the assembly is not yet uh, over, you had uh, Congress people uh, there. You know, the uh, first time when we established contact was... Uh, when the assembly session was called in January 2020, I think so it was called on 25th of January, 26th was a holiday 
and then it was there for more four days. If you recollect, that was the first time in the last five years that the opposition suddenly came on their own and they put the government on the mat. All of them had kept some uh, sheets of paper with data and they were standing up and they were uh, supporting each other. But there were players behind the scene who were doing that. We had taken a session with the opposition MLAs. We said we want to check assembly is coming. We have done our work on the streets. We want you to you have been coming for our meetings. If you are sincere, carry a battle on the floor of the assembly. So they were not effective until then. Till then. And that was the time they really ganged up, you can say, joined and put the uh, government on the mat. The government could not reply. They could not reply because we had armed them with facts and figures. You know, that was the time we realized, yes, I think so. We can take the battle ourselves inside. And uh, I have seen of late that you have been involved with a lot of youth, especially in Chikalim. And I have seen them going into the fields and agriculture. Do you think uh, uh, the youth uh, are motivated to take up to agriculture? You know, before I proceed, the youth taking into uh, agriculture the entire credit goes to Father Balmex Pereira, the parish priest of Chikaling. He is the real motivator who is inspired the youth, not only in Chikaling, across Goa. Now, there is a small story behind that. Chikaling youth just didn't take up to agriculture. But when the pandemic struck, when the lockdown happened, you know, there were no supplies. That was the time we realized we are totally dependent on neighboring states. I mean, we can't survive like this. If there's a bigger pandemic, a uh, longish lockdown, we'll be starved. If you ask me, I have a simple policy. Why should a student, after doing graduation, opt for agriculture? Because returns are uncertain. So if I may suggest... 10,000 square meters of field has been cultivated. The agricultural experts know how much will be the output. That output, after taking out all the overhead cost, everything when you remove, you get say X as the profit. So if we know that X is going to be the profit, you tell the youth, if you take up to agriculture, 50% of that we will hand over to you as cash in your account before you start. So you have, you have a, a planned scheme. Absolutely. Yeah. And will that form part of your vision for uh, the party? Absolutely. You see, in the last few years, we have seen that there's too much of political inf interference in the educational institution. That has to stop. And uh, uh, before we conclude, uh, we have had... Uh, uh, several problems now, especially as far as the tolerance. And if you know Goa, we all have been one. But of late, certain forces uh, 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 calling back uh, those old uh, issues which are no longer relevant. I am talking about your Sankwal issue and uh, the, maybe the reconstruction of the temples has said so. You see, uh, this, when you, when you realize when the BJP realizes that they are on a losing streak, they always try to fall back on a plan to um, communalize issues. You know, Goans, whether Hindus, Catholics, Muslims, the originals, they have lived together. Whether it is the Ganesh Chaturthi, Diwali, Christmas, Easter, Eid, we have always celebrated together. We have respected each other. Only in the last couple of decades, we have seen that there have been attempts only with the eye on the vote bank. Nothing else. Yeah, because this normally comes at this time Election only. Election time. So ultimately you think uh, that uh, we need a change. Absolutely. Change is already there. Only the formality remains on 14th February. Normally they say that there is nothing permanent except change. And that a change is the only constant. Let us see and wait until 14th February. But we will have to wait uh, still further till 10th March. 
to know actually whether there will be a change or not. Uh, Captain Viriato, thank you very much. And we are thankful for sharing your precious thoughts. Thank you, Captain Viriato. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.